Hey everybody, it's Kevin Godfrey. I have been getting a lot of requests to kind of go into a much faster version of the how to list a sale tutorial. The first one was 33 minutes. It got into a lot of the nuts and bolts of it. So I'm going to kind of go through the just the cosmetic how to steps that would get everyone up and running within, you know, 10 15 minutes. So we are going to assume at this point that you've gone to this button up here in the top left corner, become a seller, gone through the sign up as a beta tester. Keep in mind that once they actually do launch, all of that information will be erased and then you will be sent a link to sign up as a founding member, which will offer you that free monthly subscription for life, the no fees, you know, uh, all that good stuff. I don't know exactly what they're, what they're offering, but I just know everything's free. So that's all I care about. So I've done that. I'm now going to click the sign in button. This sign is in for buyers and sellers, but it will rec the system will recognize the difference. So I'm going to do that. And the good thing right here is register to bid. Uh, buyers can sign up with Facebook, so there's a little bit of accountability there, and there's some other, some other benefits that, again, it's sort of going outside the scope of this, so I'm, I'm not going to touch on it. When you log in as a seller, it takes you to the seller dashboard. Uh, it takes you to this main screen right here. As you can see, I've been working on some test sales and some buy items and whatnot. But there's two ways to list a sale. This giant pink button here, list a sale, or you can go to your sales tab right here and click new, new sale. Uh, you'll see active sales, save draft, and past sales. Since it doesn't matter, I'm just going to click here. And boom, it brings you right to the first tab of all of these tabs on how to list a sale. So the sale title, test sale title, 312. This is a test sale description. Obviously, the better the sale title, the better description, the more interest you'll have. Terms and conditions, I've put this all before on other test sales. I've saved it as a default term, which is why it all populated here. Pretty much use whatever you would use traditionally and then just add a couple of custom ones for how you are going to run your online business. Every The beauty about this system is that everyone is able to use it how they want to use it. So if you don't want to offer shipping, you write no shipping, even though there are other places that that will pop up but just so you have it in your terms and conditions. Pickup only, cash only, no credit cards accepted. Again, this is where you're gonna put all of that customized how you do business verbiage, okay? Client, so when you obviously have a client associated with your sale, you're going to click this button, add a client, fill out all of this information, hit save a client. Their information will come up right here, their name and then you can put in your commission rate, 30%, 35%, 15%, whatever it is for those for that specific sale. And it's important to note that this is only for your eyes, this is only for the back end, no buyers will see this. This is really just for the reports, so at the end of the sale you can click on their name and it'll populate all of the you know winning items, minus your commission rate, what they get, and, and all of that. So uh, there, when you come down here, we accept, this is what you personally accept for payment. So you can accept credit card on site, cash on site, online payments. I don't think anyone really accepts money order. And debit card is pretty much the same as credit card, so, but I don't know. Online payments in the seller dashboard. If you set up your Stripe account or PayPal account, or rather sync them up, whenever the online invoices get mailed out, it'll have the buttons for PayPal and Square that the buyers can then just go click and pay online. It's important to realize that those payments do not go through this site. So there are no processing fees. All right, that's one of the ways that a lot of these sites get you is that they, they make you go through their portal because they pull out one or 2% in fees on each transaction and then still bill you for the transaction. So, you know, for the three or 4% transaction that you're getting charged, they're pocketing one or 2%. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it's completely free money. That money again should go to you, which is why I advocated for you know the no fee. If it's going to be no fee, then let it be no fee. So that is why this is now synced up directly to you. They pay directly to you. No processing fees or no money goes to this site. And so it's all on you. You are in 100% control of your money. That's how I wanted it to be. So I'm assuming a lot of you want that as well. Charge sales tax. A lot of you have to charge sales tax. Some of you don't. I do, and that's mine. Right here, if you want to put a link, you can put a link to it. Now, the address location is tied in with Google Maps. Sometimes Google Maps is a little bit finicky, but let's see if 
Let's see if it works here. We're going to verify address. As I said, I knew it was being a little bit finicky today. So, okay. So, Google Maps recommends this address. I just went over that. Otherwise, the... There. Finicky today. So, the other difference with online sales versus traditional sales is that this address visibility down here you can show the full address but there's really never a need to show the full address because people aren't actually coming to the house unless they're a pickup but at that time they've already won the bidding so you would send them the address as a private in the private email or in their invoice so for a much heightened level of security you can only show the city and state for the entire duration Obviously, for traditional, we have to release the address at some point, whether it's a day before or 12 hours before. Or however, you want to do it for whatever you need to do it for. This completely secure. So that's one of the uh, benefits that I really like to it. So save and continue. I am in New York, so I am Eastern. There are two ways you can start your auction immediately and select a time and date. I'm going to just show you immediately. So here we have a automatically set for seven days when they've done their focus groups and their research. It shows that seven days you get more bids. So that's why it's defaulted to seven days. However, if you look, today is March 12th. If I change this to five days, this end date automatically changes for you. So you don't need to you know, count on your fingers of what day it's going to end. So let's say for the sake of this argument, I'm going to do a three-day sale. Starts today automatically configured to March 15th. My start time is immediately, and what that means is immediately upon publishing. I'm going to do my end time at 3 p.m. Remember, it is very important to change this. It will screw your entire sale up if you do not change this. Almost half of the beta testers screwed this up. So please, I'm going to sit here for five more seconds just moving my mouse over this. Please. Make sure the AM and the PM is correct. Lots will close one minute apart. What that means is that the first lot will close at 3 o'clock. The second lot will close at 3.01, 3.02, 3.03, etc. Except for when the soft close policy is activated. If a bid is placed within the last five minutes, so if the item ends at 3.05 and if a bid is placed at 3.04, an additional five minutes will be added from 3.05, so it'll be 3.10. And it'll keep going and going and going until someone wins. Let's hit save and continue. Pickup and shipping. Now, obviously for 99% of us for traditional sales, it's all pickup. We have the two day sale or a three day sale. People come, they give us money, they pay by credit card. They load it in their car. Maybe we help, maybe we don't and it's over. With this, you do have the option of having a national estate sale by offering shipping. So you can click yes if you do, but again, it's not mandatory. So if you just want to have a traditional pickup sale and only really market to your dedicated buyers, then do it. That's the beauty of this. You don't have to offer what you're not comfortable offering. Maybe in the future you'll offer up a necklace or you know one or two smalls just to kind of get the process and feel it out what works for you. But for the sake of this, I'm going to show you how it works. So offer shipping from my zip code and on all items or selected items. I always, always, always put on selected items. Why? Let's say someone buys a, an armoire for $50. I'm not getting involved in a freight situation for a $50 armoire, uh, so selected items. And I will show you where on the items and lots you can select which is which. Now pickup, that's really where a lot of people are gonna feel comfortable with because it just extend, all this really does is extend our buying time, right? So instead of forcing people through a door for two days or three days, we're allowing this, and in this case, three days to buy, to bid. And we're gonna use our two days that we were normally used to uh, for pickup. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean here. So on selected items, we have the shipping and pickup available. So now, 
again, instead of just having the sale on the Saturday and Sunday, I'm now having the sale on the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, the Thursday. I'm going to give myself off the Friday for this example to get back to the house and maybe move some things and make sure everything's there and organize it. And then I'm going to have the pickup for the Saturday and Sunday. So let people bid while they're at work or while they're in their PJs at home at night all week long. And now, instead of coming and waiting for 40 minutes, they're just coming, going to come pay you, or if they already paid online, show you the invoice, pick up their item, and they're through the door. It's so much more controlled this way. And when you show your client that now, instead of this two little days, you're offering them this, it's a lot more bang for their buck and for yours as well. Now, when I click on the 17th and 18th, down here, 17th and 18th pop up. So on this Saturday, let's say I'm going to start my first time at 8 a.m., and I'm going to go until 11 a.m., Okay, and let's say I'm going to take a lunch. Almost unheard of on a traditional sale, but I'm going to take my hour break from 11 to 12. I'm going to get back at it at 12, and I'm going to go from 12 to 3 p.m. Again, very important. Watch those a.m.s and p.m.s. It's very easy to forget that. Now, what essentially turns this turns into is a group A and a group B. So when someone actually wins the bid, you can say, hey, listen, you're group A. Your group B. You can do heavy furniture as group A. You can do smalls group B. However you want to do it, doesn't matter. But you have that option, and you can just keep adding groups. So if you want to make, you know, another four-hour uh, break, start back at four o'clock. You just keep hitting this plus sign, and it'll create group A, B, C, D, etc. Now Sunday, let's just say I know that's going to be a slow day because a lot of my buyers are going to pick up on Saturday. So I'm just going to do a just to make it easy, sort of like a walk-in. Whoops, see I a walk-in situation from 8 to 3 p.m. All right, so now I have group A and group B on Saturday, and I have just one general group A on Sunday. Save and continue. Now here is where things go a lot different and out of some of the people's comfort zones here. There are two ways to add lots. There is the individual way, which 99% or 95% of the people will use. And then for the 5%, there's a bulk upload option where you can create a CSV file, which is essentially an Excel file that you fill in all the rows and columns, you put together a, I'll show you what you need here. We're on the test server still, so there we go. So there, I have created the template. If you click here, right here, it'll show up. You can click here. It automatically just saved to my computer in the bottom left. And then you open it up, you put in all that stuff. You can upload that here. You can upload images here. And let's say that your lot number one on here is a cup. So if you go to your cup photos and name it lot 1A, lot 1B, lot 1C, when you click upload, it'll automatically associate those images with that cup. So it'll do all of that for you. This is a little bit more technical than some people are going to be comfortable with. That's why 5% of the techies will start off, but eventually make test sales, do save drafts, play around with it, get comfortable, because once you are able to do this, it is going to save you a ton of time, and it is so efficient. But for the sake of the 95%, I will click Add Individual Lots here. And here we go. This is how we make our money. Each and individual lot I'm going to add is going to be an item for sale. What I like to do first is upload items, uh, the photos. Let's just pick this, uh, this ugly blue one here. I like to put the photos first because I have done it in the past on sort of an autopilot because I've done it so many times at this point and I've actually forgotten to upload the photo. So let's pretend I only have one photo. I hit save images here. It drops down the one photo here, and because it's the only one, it sets it as the main photo and brings it up. If I uploaded three or four of these photos of different angles or the back or, or a signature on the bottom, a little star will appear right here. I can click, and that will make it the main photo. So blue art. And obviously, again, the title and the description is what makes you your money. The more descriptive you are, the better the title is. The more bids will be there, the more interest will be there. And it also saves you for when people come back and say, well, you didn't say it was uh, blue, that blue. You said it was a different shade of blue. Well, no, in my description, I said it was a variation of three uh, shades of blue. You know, so, some nonsense like that. This 
is a blue piece of art. Great. For, so now while everything for us is free, the only thing that is charged to sellers is if they decide to feature or upgrade any aspect of their sale. So if you don't click any of these buttons, it is completely free to publish. You just keep knocking these things out, hitting publish, zero dollars, zero dollars, zero dollars. But let's say this is a very good piece of art and I want to get this thing on the home page. Well, for my three day sale, I'm going to click yes. And for $5 a day, it's gonna be on there. So for 15 bucks. So if I think I'm gonna get four or $500, it makes sense to me personally to get that on the home page and to get as many eyes on it as possible. Now, if on the main page you selected a client, this will automatically fill that client's information. But let's say that you're just gonna combine two small sales into one. Again, you can make two small sales, so there's not necessarily a reason to do what I'm about to tell you. Um, and plus, two sales look better on your past sale lot than one bigger sale. But what you can do is, let's say this is client B, I can then add a client again and change that person, or maybe I can change my commission rate because for this one item I said I would do a 20% commission rather than the overall bulk 30% of all the smalls. So this is really just for the report section and only for your eyes. It does not get on the front end, only for you. So can the item be shipped? Because I selected items can be shipped on selected ones, I have the option of clicking no for this, right? So this is a now pickup only item. If I wanna offer shipping and pickup, I click yes. When you click the shipping yes, there are two sets of mandatory fields. One, the height, the, height, the width, and the length, or the weight. Now, keep in mind, if you're packing a bunch of towels, for example, you're going to do, use the measurements of the package, not the towels, because that would be very difficult. For the sake of this example, I'm going to say yes. Let's ship it 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. Keep in mind this is all inches. So you have to can make sure that you don't put 12, six, or 12 feet 6 inches uh, or whatever it is. It has to be completely inches. Now this is a piece of art category. Uh, I, I have to add another furniture category because I think they initially named home and garden, which is confusing some people. So this will be removed and there'll be a furniture category right here. But for category right there, and let's just finish with these items just for the sake of a little bit of brevity here. Now, here's my one item. If I wanted to add more items, at this point I can go to add more items. It'll pull up that screen. I just keep doing it, keep doing it. I featured this item for $5 and I shipped it. But now let's say that I said, ah, you know what, I actually don't want to ship this. Rather than go back into that item, I just click no shipping. All right, we're still working on the image uh, uploader right here. So this is going to not be completely what it's gonna look like, but I'll show you anyway. For the main sale, you have one main photo and three little, section, uh, three little photos on the right section here. That one photo that was in the items and lots was uploaded right here, but because we're tweaking it a little bit right now, you can't see it. But that little blue piece of art would be right here, and it is being recognized, but the we're just doing the conversion right now. So the blue photo would come up right here, and if you added additional lots and additional items, you would then be able to go through all of the photos that are automatically created and uploaded for you. Click on the heart, and they would go here, and then you can drag and drop those to change. All right, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to assume that photo was uploaded so we can move on. All right, so at 12, today's the 12th. I missed the 1.30 a.m. email blast, so I'm just gonna put it on the 13th and the 14th. For my email list, I'm gonna put it for tomorrow morning. I'm gonna click save and continue. All right, now, if that photo did upload properly, this would be the photo right here and then my three little photos would be right here. I do have the option of clicking preview sale. Again, this is how it would look main, and then the three little photos would be here. Three days left, it ends on 315. Here's my title, here's the town and state. Here's the description, I have pickup and shipping available. I can check on my lots, just to make sure they look good. I can click on my photos. The one photo of the blue piece of artwork will be right here. I can go to my dates and times. Good, good, good. All right, they all look good. Now I just wanna do a quick verification on this page as well before I check out. So dates and times, 
My start date is today. It ends there. My sale address, I'm only showing the town and state. Am I doing my pickup windows? Group A from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Group B, 12 noon to 3. Sunday, group A, 8 a.m. to 3. All looks good. My terms and conditions all look good. My payment methods, credit card, cash, online payments, perfect. Okay. Items we love upgrade because I selected my one item for a three-day upgrade. It came out to $15. We can actually see the math right here. One item selected. Now, if you want to do more items or remove this item, you just click go back to lots. And where it said that feature toggle, you click feature and it stops. Now, there are two additional upgrades. There's a favorite sale, which is two clicks away from the homepage. Or actually, sorry, one click from the homepage. And then there's the featured sale, which is the big guy at on the actual homepage. Now, let's say I have an amazing sale. I'm just going to market the hell out of it. So I'm just going to upgrade every chance I get. So that's $27 times three days is 81. $50 a day times three days is 150. So 50, 150, 81. Total $246 to list this sale. If this was just a run-of-the-mill sale with no great items and I'm going to market in into my only to my email list and keep it like that you don't have to click any of these this will all say zero 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 and you hit publish and let's see what happens all right so it goes into my active sale again this will be a photo all right so now this is actually a previous active sale that's my test it's from 37 to 314 I have 39 hits 39 views and total three bids I can go to my sale right here. It'll take me to the main sale page. Henry Lauren Estate Sales, Smithtown, New York. Test sale. And here's my one item right here. So they can click on the terms and conditions there. It will be in the individual lots, but if you want to share this link of your of the actual sale page, then it's pretty pickup and shipping available. Photo gallery. You can also just share the photo gallery, and when you click on the image of the photo gallery, it will take you to that individual item. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. Now, this is just the size because of it, the image I used, but your image will actually populate this whole field here. And I can't bid on my own items, otherwise there would be a pink button right here. So just so when the buyers come in, they know that the pickup is the Saturday. Uh, they have to fix some of this because it's a little clustered there. And there's where it is. The details, this is a blue piece of art. Great, these are my terms and conditions. If a buyer wants to message you about some questions on the piece, they can do so there. It'll pop up in your seller dashboard. Other items you might like, from other test sellers and beta testers right now, they've associated these pieces of work uh, with the art category, which is why I might like it. So when I advertise to my buyers about this piece of artwork, other buyers are also getting the benefit. So it's really a, an inclusive marketing form, which I really like. Now, what happens with my 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch, it'll calculate potential shipping rates depending on what kind of package I'm going to put it in, or priority and all that stuff. This is automatically populated by FedEx, or UPS rather, I'm sorry. So, uh, nope, I'm wrong. They only selected the USPS on this one. So you can obviously do FedEx or UPS, and then you would change it on your back end. This is really just sort of a, an idea for the buyer to kind of gauge what, they, what they're looking at shipping-wise. But the final price with insurance and all that stuff will be up to you. Okay. Let's see how the egg looks with the actual full screen. There we go. See, so this looks great right here. And here's the button because this is not my sale. I can, you can actually see the register to bid button. And when you register to bid, you'll have to fill out all of your information. So I'm actually on my seller page. So I just have to put in my credit card to activate as a buyer and then I'll be able to do that. But this is an extremely, you know, super secure credit card feature through Stripe. And that is how to list a sale. Any questions, shoot me a direct message on Facebook and I'll walk you through it. And I will be making additional videos on other processes and other features just to sort of get it out there, get the information out there. But again, I will personally walk anyone through any of this. I've at this point done, I think 60 plus 
test sales, so I'm pretty familiar with the system. All right, thanks.